My name is Wade Nomura, and this is Rotary Serving Our Community. Uh, recently, I had the tragedy of losing my wife, Roxanne, and uh, in doing so, I had time to reflect back and start thinking about all the good things we had done together. And I decided that with everything that she had done for Rotary and uh, through me working together with me, I wanted to put a show together uh, in honor of her. So this is a tribute to my wife, Roxanne. I gave myself enough time uh, to make sure I didn't get too choked up and was able to get through this one. And so this is why um, you're, you're seeing it now. It's been a few months now, and it's given me enough time to do that reflection portion of it. It's going to be based on a, a lot of pictures that I've taken, uh, showing the two of us working together. S to start with, um, the reason why she was important for me as far as in Rotary, she was actually one that recruited me into Rotary. Um, we started a club, the Rotary Club of Carpentry and Morning, and at that time we were chartering it. And this chartering occurred in 2002. She came home to me one day and she said, you know, um, there's this list going around and I'd like you to sign it. I go, what is it? She goes, it's a list uh, for new members joining Rotary and to start this new club. So I thought to myself, well, you know, it's, it, it's nice. I know no, nothing about Rotary. I don't really have the time to deal with this right now because I had so many other things going. So I t declined. And she said, well, you don't understand, Wade. It's uh, 25 people on that list, and then we have enough time and enough people to actually start the club. Your signature would be the 21st person, or 25th person, so we started it at that time. Well, from that time, I signed up thinking it, it was an easy job. It's something I could do. I'd just sit in the back and not do much about it. We got so involved with Rotary uh, over the next few years that uh, I, I did kind of get hooked on the bug and understand what Rotary was all about. In the meantime, uh, Roxanne became the fourth president of our club and the first woman. And because of that, uh, I kind of did take special attention. It was interesting that she would have been asked before me, and I was thinking to myself, well, why would uh, Roxanne actually become a president of this club? And so when she was named, immediately following that, they asked if I would be willing to follow her. So in fact, Roxanne was a president one year before I was, and we served back to back. The picture you see of Roxanne and myself was a picture taken at what's called PETS. Uh, PETS is the Rotary um, President-Elect Training Seminars and, and Sessions. And each year we get together, train the presidents because a president serves actually for just one year. And in that one year time, we have to get them trained in advance to make sure that they're able and qualified to run a club. So that's where this picture was taken from. The next picture I have is a picture of Roxanne and myself. Actually, this is Roxanne. When we went to India, uh, India in a city called Muradabad in the state of Uttar Pradesh, uh, extreme northeastern side of India, which is a very impoverished area. It's probably the poorest state in all of India. And this picture shows Roxanne and uh, Nancy actually walking in and doing, I'm sorry, Sharon, and doing the polio immunizations in a small village that was outside of the city of Muradabad. And as you can see, there's a contingent following her along with quite a few of the community people. This is part of uh, the fascination uh, as we do Rotary projects. This one here specific is a polio immunization project. And the uniqueness of this is that the communities that we work and represent and go through to help out are always on board. Uh, they're there, they understand what we are doing there, and we are volunteering, and they actually uh, hold us in quite high esteem, which is uh, something that we didn't expect. It's something we wanted to do, but that is service, and one of the reasons why we do it. The next picture is a picture that uh, Roxanne, myself, my grandson, Zach, and my daughter, Lisa, actually were in Belize. In 2010, I was asked to go to Belize to speak uh, at a district conference, and as a keynote speaker to that one, Roxanne, of course, was included. Uh, she's invited, being a Rotarian and also being a, a spouse of uh, the keynote speaker. They always included her. And it was fortunately for me because Roxanne actually was, was the personality of the two of us. She was the one to reach out all the time. This specific trip, um, you'll see in the background, was one of the pyramids on a trip that we took outside of the convention or the conference. It's called uh, the Lamanai River, uh, Land of a Thousand Faces. And uh, these are um, actually ruins that were unearthed during the, that time. The picture of, of uh, four of us, something pretty unique because uh, we did quite a few things and tried to include the family whenever we could. Um, my grandson, Zach, and, and my daughter, Lisa, this was their first international trip they had taken with me. And I had told my grandson, 12 at the time, 
that in order for him to go, he had to actually um, learn to speak to adults. And so part of the lesson plan that we had put to him was to learn to speak uh, with adults with the eye contact that we, we had come to expect as far as adults. Roxanne and myself were actually sat during one of the dinners uh, along with my daughter and my grandson at a table that was pretty exclusive. There's only six seats there, and two of the seats were taken up by locals. Those locals, we later found out, uh, one of the gentlemen was actually the um, Secretary General, and the other one was the Prime Minister of Belize. And so we had one fascinating dinner. My grandson, who was on contract missing school, actually um, had the opportunity to collect cards, and he took that home to show with the class. And so as a 12-year-old, pretty outstanding opportunity. The next picture um, we have is a picture of uh, myself, Roxanne, and um, Tomoko Kurosawa, who is an ambassadorial scholar who'd spent one year here studying at UCSB. We got to be good friends with them, and Roxanne especially uh, hit off with her quite well. We, uh, this picture was taken in Tokyo, Japan, when I was there for a rotary project. And the fascinating part was, or the great part was, is that because of Roxanne's connection to the family, their family actually came down and visited with us, took us around Tokyo and showed us one great time. So again, uh, if it weren't for Roxanne, those opportunities would not have arisen. The next picture we have is a picture that uh, was taken in Masan in Korea, um, South Korea, where I was uh, invited in as a governor. And uh, along with my wife, Roxanne, and a contingent from our district, the picture there re reflects all of the leadership from both districts. The picture uh, also shows behind you a warehouse. And in this warehouse is actually a, a fish, fish market, huge fish market. It's about two blocks long. And I'll never forget, the, uh, the fish are all alive. It looks like they're in aquariums, but they're huge fish. One of the areas you walked by had a, an eel tank. And in that eel tank, uh, <laughs> there are live eels. We had one of the eels actually jump out. And so uh, pretty scary for Roxanne. She was screaming. People were running all over the place. Eventually, they got the eel and put it back in the tank. Along that time, we also um, were able to eat some of the food there. We sampled it. And they bought some meal for us. It was, it was a lunch. And at the lunch, they bought what's called nori. Uh, nori is uh, seaweed. And the seaweed was one of the few things Roxanne could eat because he's allergic to fish. And um, she said, oh, this is quite nice. I, I enjoy the, the nori. Well, needless to say, uh, in Korea, you don't want to say anything about what you like or don't like. Because what happened was, as we got back to the hotel that night, uh, to our surprise, was a case of this nori, the seaweed. I mean, literally a case. How we got it home, I still don't remember. But uh, they were very cordial, very gracious, and got that for us. The next picture is a picture of us in, in Mexico. Actually, my wife, Roxanne, and the contingent that actually is from Mexico. This is in a city called Pascuaro in uh, Morelia, near Morelia, in the state of Michoacan. The conference there was actually based on traditional wear. And so people that were attending the conference were asked to dress up in the, the Mexican clothes that they would wear in, in that area that time. And so that's what the picture is. And as you see, uh, I'm not in the picture. Part of the reason is I'm the photographer in most of these times. And um, the other part was they usually asked Roxanne to be in the picture. So pretty special. And because she was outgoing, this was one of the opportunities we had. The next picture we have is uh, the groundbreaking of the um, playground, the Tamal Interpretive Play Area at the State Beach in Carpinteria, right across from the railroad tracks. Now, the story behind this one went is um, a member of our club, our, our Rotary Club, decided that he wanted to do a playground, similar to a playground he had done in, let's see, in the city of Arlington, Texas. And in Arlington, Texas, uh, they did a playground that took five days to build. And Roxanne loved that idea. She said, we want to do the same thing. So we started a playground. Now, think about this. The playground that we started with was met with numerous uh, hardships, uh, little roadblocks, I would say starting with the fact that the state parks of California did not allow uh, playgrounds on their site. So we had to take a look at that and figure out how we were going to address that. The next one was that the project went from $128,000 to a million dollar playground. And uh, this is because of the interpretation or interpretive program specific to this playground. So we uh, ended up spending eight years of our time, Roxanne and myself, Roxanne was probably more positive than I was, about actually seeing 
this to come, to come to fruition. Now, the groundbreaking, uh, we see all the people there, was something that was quite an accomplishment. And if it weren't for Roxanne, this would have never happened. Eight years later, we actually broke ground on this one. Now that playground is in place in Carpinteria and became a uh, national signature model from around the, uh, around the area. The next picture we have is a picture um, that we met with when I was the governor in Nipomo. And in Nipomo, um, they did a, a project at the Hearst uh, Ranch. And at the Hearst Ranch, which you see the picture of, we were asked to dress up in a uh, cowboy garb, and uh, then there was a meal, a barbecue that was a uh, Nipomo style, new, um, I'm sorry, um, Santa Maria style barbecue. And at the Santa Maria bar barbecue style, they hosted this event, and it was a fundraiser for polio. We were invited as special guests, and so we had a great time doing it. As you can see, Roxanne really got into character on this one, which was nice. And the other point was, I'd like to point out, is that this was one of two events that happened that same day. The second event was to happen in Paso Robles. And we'll switch to the next picture because uh, this was actually the Paso Robles event. It was called the Wine Cook-Off. And at the Wine Cook-Off, the idea behind this, and by the way, it was an $85,000 profitable um, event. They have the wineries come together in Paso Robles, and rather than rating the wines, they rate the food that goes along with the wine. The gentleman you see in the picture, Rex Thornhill, was the president of the Paso Robles Club at that time. And the idea was is that we were a special guest. We became one of the, quote, judges for the food events, which was fascinating. What you don't see and what you may not recall is the picture right before this had Roxanne wearing a cowboy suit or cowboy clothes. When we got there uh, to Paso Robles, they told us it was going to be Western theme. Well, as we saw people walking in and out of that, we noticed that that was not the case. Most of the people are dressed traditional. So um, we actually had to do a quick change <laughs> in the truck itself. And so fortunately, we had enough clothes where we weren't, quote, the only Asian cowboys on scene of about 30,000 people. So uh, we kind of dodged a bullet on that one, literally. The next picture uh, I have is a Carpinteria. This is Carpinteria District Conference, again, uh, my governor year. And you'll see the uh, contingent, the team that actually came from Korea. They came to uh, Carpinteria, and we asked them to dress traditional, what they would wear normally. And Roxanne, as you see, is wearing a hanbok also. That was given to her as a gift by the Korean governor. And because of that, she was, she was honored to wear it. It's one of the few times we actually got to dress up. Myself, um, I was given one also, but because of the fact that I had to speak, the hanbok wasn't quite working well for me, so I put a suit on, and I put actually a, a Japanese coat over that, which I swapped off when I had to do the speaking part of it. But um, the team that came in from Korea, and also from most of the world, actually all converged in Carpinteria. Um, I'm thinking about possibly doing a show on this one, but Carpinteria actually rolled out the red carpet. My idea for the project or, or the event was actually to make it international in theme. So I invited about 60 international guests from around the world that actually came into Carpinteria. We shut down the whole city for that group in that event. The next picture we have is, is a picture of Roxanne and myself. And uh, I would say uh, one of the great days that we had, and this is right after the ground baking, when some of the materials actually started coming in for the playground. This is a metal, or I'm sorry, a concrete tamal uh, canoe that became the feature item for the playground itself. And uh, we were so excited to see this come in. It actually came in from Minnesota, was manufactured there, it came in on a truck, and we were able to um, see it before it was installed. And that was one of the fascinating things. At that point in time, we knew that that playground was gonna come true. The next picture I have is a picture of uh, Roxanne and myself building a wall. <laughs> this wall is actually part of Camp Keep. Current Environmental Education Program, which is a sixth grade environmental camp in Los Osos, in the area of Montaña de Oro in San Luis Obispo. Uh, the uniqueness of this is that this, play, or this camp was actually uh, sponsored, is actually sponsored by Bakersfield and the current uh, education uh, area. And because of that, we decided to become very involved. The design that you see going in place is something that I had designed for this camp to help them out along the way. And uh, as you can see, Roxanne, she jumped into everything. She wanted to be there specifically to make sure that everything went along. She, she loved to work. She loved the service part of it, and so she wanted to be included in that, which, of course, she was. 
The next picture we have is uh, Dave Morton, who is uh, the organizer of this camp. Uh, he's from Bakersfield Club, uh, the Bakersfield Rotary Club, and the plaque that you see is an exchange plaque. The original plaque was given in honor of myself as a governor. Um, the second one, I asked if, in fact, they would be willing to change the name of that um, native garden to include Roxanne in it. They said, we would love to, and um, believe it or not, this is probably a month later, they actually had the plaque presented to me. So um, again, that's quite a tribute to my wife, Roxanne. The camp itself was actually named after me because of my governor year. And they asked if it was okay to name it after me, and I said, for sure, I would love to help out with it. And they were actually surprised to find out that I was a landscaper, but we went through the whole project, and it's an outstanding one. The next picture we have is during, uh, I would say, New Year's time. This is a picture of the um, Rose Parade. And at the Rose Parade that year, we have the President, uh, Suguchi Tanaka of Japan, international president, along with Jane Goodall. And we saw them, we met Jane, when we were actually there at the float part of it. I was asked, uh, or actually I saw Jane Goodall, and I asked Tanaka-san, who uh, I was working with as his aide, if he would like to meet Jane Goodall, which he said, please, I I'd love to meet her. And so I took him up, and they met as if they were old friends. Well, what I didn't realize is that Tanaka-san actually was the chair of a convention in Birmingham, the International Convention, and the keynote speaker was Jane Goodall. So you were old friends, literally, and that was one of the fascinating parts of Rotary, making that world in that time so, so small. That year, um, Roxanne, uh, we had a good time. We actually spent a lot of time building that float. The next, uh, the next year, uh, I'm sorry, the previous year to that one, um, year 2011-12, in 2012, Roxanne was invited to actually walk and participate in the Rose Parade. And the picture that you see of Roxanne walking in that float, she got to have the lead spot. And the picture uh, in the background, the people sitting, is uh, past president, international president, Kalyan Banerjee and his wife, Binota, who was, um, he was actually my president, the year I was district governor. And by the way, he was the first international president to actually sit on that float. So I thought that was pretty fascinating. Roxanne got to be the first one walking on that part of it too, which was equally great. The next picture uh, is a picture that Roxanne was, well, was taken of Roxanne and myself when we were in Portugal at, at a Rotary International Convention. And one of the fascinating things I like to share is that you've seen a lot of our international travel. I tried to highlight a lot of those. These opportunities were all made because of the fact that it was Rotary. Rotary was in that position. I was uh, selected as a district governor, but along with that, I was told by my mentor that one of the important things and one of the assets I had as being a governor was that I was given the, quote, twofer. In other words, uh, not only was I being selected as a governor to lead the district, but also that my wife, Roxanne, was equally um, capable of, of running the district also. So that would became, quote, our twofer. We were a team of two, not just a, a single person myself leading the district. So we went to Portugal. Uh, we enjoyed pretty much every, every moment of that time. And uh, we went to just about every one of them until um, Roxanne got sick. The next picture we have is uh, District 6400. And this district is part of Michigan and part of uh, Canada. And the picture we have there, the lady in the center, her name is Donna Schmidt. She was the governor at that time. And the governor um, is the one that hosts us. I was serving as the international president uh, representative that time. And uh, I was sent by Ron Burton. And Ron Burton at that time told me he's sending me to a very special district. That district uh, was a district, I found out later on, that had the incoming let's see, international director. Her name is Jennifer Jones, along with her husband, Nick. And they are also ones in this picture. Now, Jennifer went on to become an international vice president, which is very rare, especially for a woman. She became only the second woman vice president in Rotary history to uh, hold that position. We went to uh, Mackinac Island, which was a very unique place, very fascinating. And again, we are hosted by the district and sent by Rotary International to represent the international president. The next picture I have is a picture actually in Virginia, District 7570, where we went to uh, Homestead, Virginia, and actually served as president's rep there also. And the picture you have there, because it was close to uh, Bristol Motor Speedway, 
they had cardboard cutout cars. And part of the race was is that we stand in these cardboard cars and actually have races. Well, um, needless to say, uh, I, I was not ready for this race, and so we were kind of tanking it. I decided, well, you know what, uh, this is all about fun, and I was getting lapped by just about everybody out there. By the way, the ones that get the lead are the ones that are fundraising the most money, and they had clubs backing them, districts backing them, and I had no idea what that even was. And so because of that, we were in last place. So I said, Roxanne, why don't you come and join me? There's, we are the only car out there with two people. I said, I got a jump seat for you. So she actually was going to jump in the back. Being Roxanne, she decided, no, I'm taking the lead spot. And so she became the driver, jumped through the windshield, and I became the back guy. So <laughs> again, that's Roxanne for you. The next picture is a picture that was taken, again, during the holiday season. And this is a picture of past president Gary Wong and his wife Karina from uh, Taiwan. He served as a president, and as you can see, Roxanne and myself, we were always included as two. Oftentimes, the Rotary International president comes as two, and in this case also, Karina, um, Gary's wife, is also a Rotarian, so we, we um, got along quite well. One thing fascinating about this trip and having Gary um, as, I would say, the lead and myself as his aide, we got to be good friends, and we spent a lot of family time together, which is really nice, and that would have been not the case had it not been for Roxanne. The next picture we have is a picture um, of this last year's PETS, President-elect training seminar in Los Angeles. Um, we had current president, uh, Ian Risley, along with his wife, Juliet. And his wife, Juliet, also a Rotarian, actually also served the same year I did as a uh, district governor internationally, and they're from Australia. So this is uh, one of the last events that Roxanne was able to join me at. And we had a great time because uh, Juliet and myself, being classmates, uh, spent a lot of time together, training, um, going through the process, got to be really good friends. And Ian is a great man. Um, I'm going to do a program on him shortly, but you'll find how genuine, how down to earth he is. And that, again, uh, reflects out on the personal touch. And Roxanne was able to pull that out of people. The next picture we have is a picture um, in Omwe, Chile where I was invited down because I actually helped charter two clubs in Chile, and this is one of the clubs. This is a charter night, and as you can see, they're all well-dressed. What you may also notice in this picture is that Roxanne is center. I'm, I'm off to the side. Again, uh, important factor was uh, Roxanne should be in the center, I, and I was tasked to be on the outside. And again, that's, that's just Roxanne. They, they always pulled her towards the center because uh, she was so likable, so friendly, and she was... Uh, always quote the center of attraction. The next picture I have is one of the meetings we went to in Valparaiso, uh, again, in Chile. And uh, this picture here is with the current governor. And the current uh, governor at that time invited us in to, uh, I would say, get together, talk about how we can partner up and do projects, different projects together. And again, you'll notice, even though they're talking business, I'm the one with the camera, and Roxanne's the one that they are entertaining. She was hard to pass up and uh, oftentimes became the center of attraction. <laughs> in this case, even, she doesn't even speak Spanish. And in Chile, uh, the gentleman she's talking to spoke no English. So uh, again, the fascinating part, they were always able to figure it out. Uh, Roxanne's sp Spanish was very limited, but she seemed to always get along quite well, and they all understood what she was talking about. The next picture I have is, again, uh, this is in Chile also. And uh, one of the fascinating parts of uh, this picture here that you'll see is that um, Roxanne was always a person that I would say people were attracted to. And the lady in the back was a Rotarian also. And they actually invited us to their house. And as you can see, Roxanne's looking up, taking a look at quite a few things that were being pointed out to her by her hosts. Um, again, I was a camera guy. so. Um, she was interested. Roxanne loved every minute of these trips because she was so fascinated by seeing the world. By the way, um, we had never traveled internationally ever uh, until, it was until we joined Rotary in 2002. And that's when we started opening up our international travels. And we've been to over 40 international trips at that time. So um, that was, again, probably attributed a lot to Roxanne and her personality. On her passing, uh, by the way, Roxanne passed away. She fought two years with pancreatic cancer before it finally uh, took her. But um, our club wanted to honor her. So the picture that you see here is Carpenter High School. And at Carpenter High School, we um, actually honored Roxanne with two different scholarships, one through the Boys and Girls Club and another one through the Santa Barbara Scholarship Foundation. 
honoring her for uh, students that were going on to um, the next level, to college. And uh, these are named after Roxanne. Because she was so popular and so well-liked, there were a lot of contributions that came in through the community and through people that knew her. And these funds will then be able to be used in future. And we, right now, we have at least a minimum of five to seven years with the scholarships uh, dedicated again to, to Roxanne. The next picture is a picture that uh, Roxanne and I took. This is in 2012, when we were both uh, named as Carpenterians of the Year. We were only the third couple in about a 60-year history that were uh, named as a couple. Most of it had to do with uh, the fact that we had done the playground that year. Uh, that was the groundbreaking year, actually the opening year of the playground. But also because we had uh, done so much in the community. And when I say we, I went one direction, Roxanne went another direction. But we always put things together at the end. That was one of the fascinating things about, um, I would say, our life together. I would, in closing, what I would like to say is this. Um, President Tanaka actually left us with a message. His theme for that year was peace through service. And service, in his words, were acts of kindness and personal sacrifice. In personal sacrifice, uh, it crosses borders, um, cultural borders, religious borders, political borders, and misunderstandings, which creates this peace. Peace is peace throughout the world, or world peace, community peace, and also peace among the individuals. As Rotarians, we kind of get an inner peace of all the work that we do. Roxanne lived this life of service, service through acts of kindness, kindness and personal sacrifice. And because of that, to me, she became a model, a model to the last point in Tanaka's service, peace through service point, and that is peace of mind. Roxanne lived that uh, to, her fin to her final days where her sacrifices and what she had done actually became those great things of what she accomplished. And um, she reflected back in the last few days about all the great things she had done. And because of that, I wanted to uh, attribute, actually, I uh, do at least one, one, one show in honor of Roxanne. She was never on this show because she had been fighting cancer since I started the show. I was kind of hoping we would have her on the show, but as you'll see and see in future shows, she will always be there in pictures because of the fact we did everything together as a couple. And with that, um, I'd like you to take a look at Rotary. Reflect back on all that Rotarians have done. Roxanne was one of the rare examples of somebody that had done quite a bit. But there are Rotarians around the world doing the same thing. Peace through service, sacrificing through acts of kindness. And with that, thank you very much. We will see you next time.